OK, yeah. so let's start with uh, Marie's story. Four years ago, she was uh, devastated. Terrible uh, news she was given. She was told, you have cancer, and the anguish did not end there. No, following her diagnosis, Marie was given just one year to live and told that she'd have to lose an eye if there was any hope at all of saving her life. And uh, as the Yemen said earlier, she's beaten all the odds. And after postponing her wedding several times, she finally walked down the aisle earlier this year wearing her custom-made prosthetic eye. She's here now um, alongside facial surgeon Carver Shakib. Welcome to you both. Good to see you. And thank you so much for talking about this because... It must be quite hard for you when people must stare at you in the street. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I think a lot of that is people don't know what to say. There, there's a fascination, isn't there, yes, of course. Yeah, um, so this eye is made specially for you, yes. designed yeah. for you. Yes. And how did they take, did they take lots of photographs of your good um, eye? And bef well, before I had the surgery, um, the prosthetic technician came up and took some, on the wall and took some photos of my eye as it was. Yeah and had a lot of medical photography taken as well. So when they told you they could make you a prosthetic eye, how good did you think it might be? Or were um, you worried it would look They showed look me odd? a couple of photos and I sort of, and I just, I wasn't, I didn't think it was going to be as good as it yeah. was, to be honest. <laughs> so you've got nothing in at the moment. No, so would no. you always wear a patch like that with your glasses? Day to day yeah. I tend to, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you are actually going to show us how that yes. fits in, aren't yeah. you, in a moment. Um, let's talk to you about getting that diagnosis though. Um, and it was actually a really happy time in your life, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Because you're, you're your lovely partner Graham, or now husband, yes. um, had proposed to you after many years yes, of being together. Yes, yeah, I've been waiting a while. <laughs> and you were busy planning your wedding. Yes, yeah, we, we were, um, we, we, um, he proposed literally two weeks before, mm. and I'd been going to the doctor because I had this blocked, blocked nostril, um, and then um, I went and just after he'd diagnosed, no, after, after mm. he proposed, and um, they said that they, they thought I needed a CT scan to sort of check things out. Um, and then a couple of months later, I started to get quite poorly and they looked at the CT and realised that there was a tumour there. Yeah, so. And it was a and big tumour. It was quite a big tumour, yes. Yeah. yeah. See on the, on and the um, you actually... Um, discovered that there's a terrible moment when you sneezed and the whole yes, thing. Yes, yeah, that was back in, that was what initially made me go to the doctors again. I've been a couple of times and they thought it was a nasal polyp, giving me some sprays. Um, a couple of weeks after he'd proposed, I sort of sneezed and there was a huge um, mm. nosebleed, sort of an explosion more or less. Yeah. And that's what made me think, right, well, I need to go back and get something sorted. I was working full time. Up until then, I'd kind of thought, oh, it's nothing and mm. sort of get on with it. I was a busy person. I know. So. And, and as you say, you were busy parenting and here's how busy she was parenting because when she was given uh, the offer news and you sit there and you're in a doctor's surgery and the doctor says I'm really sorry mm. you've got cancer yeah um, you, you you sort of I'm not sure if you went into a state of shock or you just got on with your life <laughs> did you tell yes, us what yeah. you did right after that um, well I had my mum and obviously Graham with me and they were obviously quite upset and we sort of they said come back in a couple of hours we're gonna have this big meeting so we had these two hours and um, I remember they were both quite upset, so I got in the car and I drove the car and I thought, right, OK, what, what can we do? So we went to the supermarket and um, I bought some school uniform for my children. Oh, the school uniform, yes, you just got yeah, on. I just happened to see it and thought, oh, yeah, I need that. And afterwards, when I look back at it, I think, why did I do that? But obviously at the time, it was just a coping shock. And mechanism. the prognosis was really bad, wasn't it? At that time, What yes, did they yeah. tell you? Um, they said that they were going to try chemotherapy, but because it was such a rare tumour and such a rare form of cancer, they didn't know how to treat it. So they were going to try chemo, but they thought I probably had about a year to live if it didn't work. And how rare so. is this carver? I mean, had you s heard of this kind of tumour before? I certainly heard of it. It's a chondrosarcoma. Sarcomas as a group of cancers are quite rare. Um, I would say the literature says it's less than 2% of all the head and neck cancers that's diagnosed in UK. It's so rare that as a nation, we try to centralise them to specific areas so people get more experience and uh, more familiarity with managing these cases more optimally. Yeah. And you've got a model there. Yes, Doctor, this, this actually shows now here th in this model. This would be the size of uh, Marie's uh, tumour there. If you just turn that round to the, what, the camera, what camera? Yeah, there we are yeah. there. There we are there. So the redness we've seen there would have been the mass and the area that the tumour took up within uh, Marie's okay, there head. There we go, that's better, yeah. Right, so how do they attack that? How do they go in there? What had they to do, Doctor? To the best option now, stated in literature, is surgery. And normally it's done in the multidisciplinary teams trying to access the tumour. So very often it will involve a maxillofacial surgeon or ear, nose and throat surgeon to gain access to the tumour. Surgery will entail taking the tumour off in one block with a cuff of normal tissue because 
the tumor always spreads beyond what naked eye can see. Yes. So typically go about two centimeters away from that. So once the tumor is removed, you have a fairly large defect. So that's yeah. the first part, it's called the ablative surgery. At that stage, the next stage is the reconstruction. So what we typically do is to place free tissue transfer or free flaps where a part of the body, in Marie's case, it was the hip, that bone together with muscle and skin was harvested. So they take that from your hip and they yes, put it up yeah. into your face. Whilst I was having the operation, they did that as well. Yeah, it was Gosh. A long time, yeah. And under microscope, they attach an independent blood supply and vein to drain the blood away to reconstruct the area. So that free flap provides a facial contour. Right. Then, Marie, um, a man comes in and he looks at you and he studies you uh, and he says, I can... Uh, he sees some sort of prosthetic expert, he's right? A, he's a yeah, maxillofacial surgeon. Oh, so, right. Yes, you, yeah. you, and what sort of time and detail uh, and scrutiny did he take over trying to get this, this eye? Um, when they came to do the eye, that was amazing. They, um, they take um, a sort of a mould of my face to start with and they pull plaster in. They have lots of different angles um, and took hundreds and hundreds of photos. And it took, from start to finish, I would say around six weeks. OK, and um, here's the result we've yes, got now. If, yeah. you, if you would fit that for us this morning and yeah. we, can, we can see the difference here, what goes on. Yes, so yes. you need, what, what is this you use? It's using? just like a, a glue. A glue? Thing, yeah, just yeah. put it around the edges. Um, mm -hmm. And I suppose this is second nature to you now, but it must is, have been yes, yeah, very odd for you to quite... start with. It was, yeah. Um, and to start with, I didn't like it no. because it looks so fake. Um, and working with children, obviously they pick up on things straight away. So straight away they were, why are you wearing, that doesn't seem real. And so it was easier to wear a patch. Mm -hmm. So that's literally just a case of sticking it. And like that, just have to hold the edges for a bit and make sure they're stuck on properly. And what sort of confidence does that give you now when you, when um, you wear that? It's, it's, as you can see, with my glasses. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You, can you certainly tell can't tell there. the difference now, yeah. And that's what they've done, they've tried to make the edges so that they're you know, near to my glasses. If you don't mind me saying so, you have very, very unusual colour of eye. I yeah, mean, I, I would find it hard to describe that. What would your eye colour be? I would say a kind of hazel, but on a greeny side of hazel. And he has matched that perfectly. Really, really well, yes. Yeah. So it's actually a tiny little disc that he sort of had and he did all the colours and then obviously he sort of matched it as well as he did. And I know that nobody can really give you the all clear exactly, but they, the prognosis Positive. is now yes. good, isn't yeah. it? Oh yes, yeah. I have scans every three to six months and so far there's been no recurrence. So. Um, and so anyway, you had to postpone your wedding not yes. once but several times, yes. didn't yeah. you? Because of all the surgery and things that were going on. But in February this year, yes. eventually, Finally. there you are. Yo. You walk down the aisle with your lovely girl, <laughs> and there are your lovely girls. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you feel on that day? It was amazing. I was so pleased to actually finally actually get to that day. Um, all my family came up on the Friday, like we were in a hotel, and we all kind of sat there the night before. And I remember looking around the bar and thinking, it's actually going to happen. We're going to get married. And, and I know it was a big worry for you, for your children, yes, uh, to actually yeah. see you and how they would accept you. Yes, and uh, yeah. what was their reaction? What was their first reaction when. Um, when they first came to me, um, I was on the ward. I wouldn't let them see me whilst I had a tracheostomy, and I wanted yes. for that to come out so they could actually talk to me. Um, and I remember I was on crutches and I had a drip, and I went out to the, to the beginning of the ward so that I could see them um, and the first thing they said was why are you wearing your pyjamas <laughs> <laughs> in the middle yeah. of the day to them well, that's a good, I would say that's a good reaction if yes, they're only noticing yeah. your pyjamas. Yes, uh, yeah. Marie thank you so much and good luck nice. with this thank you. and to think people worry about putting a contact lens in in the morning. Yes yeah. Yeah. oh no it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> very good that's thank good you very much indeed and doctor you must be very proud of um, your profession and your colleagues and people who can do work like that. You certainly had pioneering work and um, but what's heartening about the surgery is it continues to improve, yes. both in yeah. terms of surgery, um, the artificial eyes made by a maxillofacial technician, and the, what they can produce every time, so it's just incredible. amazed me. It's well, amazing. Incredible. Um, people have been watching, listening, and uh, having their say on your story today, which is what we like to do. Lauren, what are they saying? Yeah, lots of you have found Marie's story very inspiring. Tremaine Rees, 15 years ago at the age of 28, I lost my right eye to malignant melanoma. Having a prosthetic eye made, uh, made and fitted was wonderful to me. Uh, and Meryl Hesketh, what a brave lady and what a wonderful happy ending. You deserve happiness. Uh, back to you, Eamon Rees.
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. For more information or advice on cancer and anything else we've just talked about uh, with Marie, you can head to our website. We're going to be back after the break. We've got all today's top news stories from the newspapers. Want to know what you think about that as well. See you after this. Well, Marie. Bye.